Well, with the five assembly elections being concluded, the path to 2024 seems clear. The BJP swept the polls in three states. The Congress decimated once again, raising the question again, has the Congress dynasty been its biggest enemy? The main opposition Congress is a far cry from its glorious past. Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo campaign that was supposed to unite the opposition is also now a failed experiment. Prime Minister Modi's party had a strong showing in these polls, but it's the defeat of the Congress in all the three heartland states that demands attention. The Congress's defeat dashes any notion that the opposition could pose a serious challenge. The prospects of the newly formed 28-party alliance led by the Congress, the party that has ruled India for 54 years since independence, is looking weak in comparison. So what went wrong for the Congress? Let's try to decode this. There was a widespread feeling, even before the elections kicked off, that the Congress would win in at least Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. In the end, the Congress was defeated in three states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, known together as the Hindi heartland. Now, defending, uh, depending on who you ask, you will get a variety of reasons. Some say it was overconfidence in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh that led to the Congress's loss. Others say it was factionalism within the Congress state unit in Rajasthan that led to the end result. Still, the party seemed to have harnessed a well sprung uh, well sprung notion of posi positivity when its former president and gandhi sign led a massive bharat joro yatra rahul gandhi walked the length of this country covering a staggering 4000 kilometers in about 136 days the aim was to energize the party cadre as well as attract voters many indian news outlets would have told you that Rahul Gandhi's campaign was a roaring success. After all, he worked hard to revive the party in recent years. Apart from the 135-day march across the country, he also changed the party's leadership. He pushed to form a 28-party alliance called India. The party's victory in the big southern state of Karnataka this year was seen by the party as the beginning of its comeback. That was until Sunday's results came in, prompting the much-needed soul-searching within the party. Yes, the campaign may have helped it win in Telangana on Sunday. It is a key South Indian state. Yet, the overwhelming sense in India is that if the Bharat Joro Yatra was such a success, the results from the recently concluded polls should have painted a different picture. That is clearly not the case. The Congress lost the elections for a variety of reasons, leadership, messaging, organization, candidates as well. Now, play out through the local, uh, playing out through the local context and each of these reasons played a part in the results. However, we focus on one more theory today. Could it be the Congress's reliance on dynasty? If all these measures haven't worked, it clearly shows that the Congress is stuck in a Rahul Gandhi trap. There's an overwhelming sense within the voters that the Gandhi family is the stumbling block to the reinvention of the Congress party. Many political analysts have said that if the Congress does away with the Gandhi dynasty, then it is set for a comeback and can take on the Modi juggernaut. They have not been wrong. Time and again, we have seen how the BJP, due to Modi's popularity clearly has an upper hand, especially in places where there is a direct Congress versus BJP fight. And Prime Minister Modi himself has at many points blamed dynasty politics of many opposition parties for their loss in elections. But it's not just the Congress, almost all other political parties across the country, including the BJP in some states, have a younger generation of leaders whose uh, parents have been or still are active in politics. Still, the Congress's loss in election stands out. After all, it is India's oldest political party and all its heavyweights, known as the old guard, are in their 70s. The latest election re results create uncertainty for other leaders in the Congress. They have been accused of nepotism, factionalism, uh, take on such uh, leaders such as the Digvijay Singh, for example, the 76-year-old Congress veteran who wielded 
considerable influence in Madhya Pradesh, was seen as playing second fiddle this election. He, along with another Congress veteran, Kamal Nath, have faced criticism within the party for trying to promote their sons, sometimes at the cost of the party itself. Kamal Nath's son, Nakul Nath, is a sitting MP, while Digvijay's uh, uh, son also uh, was a minister in the previous Kamal Nath government. Now, interestingly, most of these leaders were brought into party fold by different generations of the Gandhis. In many of these states, like Madhya Pradesh, the party top brass invested in grooming these leaders who would lead the party in the future. Long story short, most of them lost their seats in successive elections. In recent years, the Congress has struggled with handing over leadership roles to younger leaders, leading to the old guard versus young guard conflict. This conflict, especially when you are in power, reflects poorly in your ability to effectively handle the government. And so more and more voters lose faith. Above all, the results leave us uh, with the big takeaway. Congress clearly is still out of touch with reality. And the Congress, with Congress out, who is left to challenge the government on the national level? There is no major opposition and such a scenario leads us to ask this. What is a democracy without a strong, effective opposition? The Congress needs to go back to the drawing board, assess, examine what went wrong.